Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are getting started with a brand new chapter that is chapter 4, Test Analysis and Design. And as a part of this particular tutorial, we'll be covering the first segment of it, which is 4.1, the Test Techniques Overview. And here you'll get to know what are the different categories we have in the syllabus and what are the different techniques under each of these categories, what we will be covering as a part of the syllabus. To begin with, of course, the very first thing we're talking about is what are test techniques? Indeed, test techniques are those solutions to the principle number two, which said that exhaustive testing is impossible. If you quickly recall back from the chapter one, the principle number two, it says exhaustive testing is impossible. And we told you that it's not really possible and practical enough to conduct as many tests as possible. That means we just can't come up with all certain combinations of test data and then try to test the system, which could be sometimes very, very impractical in terms of the time, the deadlines and time to market, etc. Now the question was, how can we gain confidence and be confident about the work products which we are making within that timeline without creating exhaustive test cases? Because one way you're not letting the people or test engineers create all the test cases what they want to, and at the same time, you're claiming that we must find defects and gain confidence about it and so on. So how is that even possible? And that's what this chapter is going to answer. That is test technique. Test techniques are techniques which helps you reduce the number of test cases in order to minimize your effort, but not compromising on the coverage. So instead of creating, say, for example, 40 test cases, maybe only four test cases would be enough to gain the similar amount of coverage on the code. Now, in that context, we will be learning different techniques from different categories, but a quick short introduction about this. Let's quickly have a look about it. So test techniques are a context and here the test techniques support the tester in test analysis. That is what to test and in test design. That is how to test. That means the techniques are just not limited to uh, write the test cases, but also helps you uh, analyze what exactly to test because techniques can certainly be helpful in deriving test cases from the requirements and for that you can certainly analyze those requirements too. Also to add here the test techniques helps to develop a relatively small but sufficient set of test cases in a very systematic way. Certainly we don't look forward to have exhaustive test cases to be a part of it but reduce the number of test cases and get, gain optimum coverage what we need for that particular functionality. Also to add here, when it comes to test technique, it also helps the tester to define test conditions, identify the coverage items, and identify the test data during the test analysis and design. That means techniques are just not to give you the number of test cases. Parallelly, it helps you identify the different test cases what you need, the test data to support it, the various conditions, and certainly the, you know, the way it should be conducted, like positive and negative, can also be derived from here. That means the valid test cases and invalid test cases can be easily derived using all these techniques. So further, we will be talking about what are the three categories we are covering here and one by one we'll be also discussing what are the techniques under them. So let's go with the very first one here and that is black box test techniques. So when we talk about the black box test techniques, indeed this was covered as an introductory concept in chapter two, where we differentiated between white box and black box. And certainly if a black box tester has to reduce their number of test cases, they would prefer using black box test techniques. Now black box test techniques is also called as specification based techniques, which are basically based on the analysis of the specified behavior of the test object without reference to its internal structure. That means I'm not worried about what is the design of the product. I'm not worried about what is the code underneath that particular product. But my major intention is what is the expectation of the product? What is the ask of the application? And that is what you refer to as requirements or specification. And you refer these information in order to derive your test cases. Another important point to add here is that if in case your project follows a very little detailed or very brief requirement, which is high level requirements, then applying these techniques may be a little complicated or sometime may not be even possible. So it's very, very important to understand that in order to apply black box test techniques, the basis is detailed requirement. 
If you don't have any detail requirement in your project, then black box test techniques is not applicable. The reason I told you this point very clearly is sometimes they just frame a question from here stating that, hey, which one of this is one of the characteristics of black box test techniques? Then you must be clear about that, that requirements are mandatory to be there in detailed format in order to apply black box test techniques. Further to add here, of course, uh, the test cases are independent of how the software is implemented because of the internal structure is not dependent here. Consequently, if the implementation changes, but the required behavior stays the same, then the test cases are still useful and can be applied back once again. So point being made is, as far as the requirement remains the same, no matter the code changes, it still is valid for us. The test cases, what we might have written already, is still valid because our test cases were derived right from the requirements, not depending on the code. The techniques what we'll be covering here are four, equivalence partition, boundary value analysis, straight transition testing, and the decision table testing. So these four techniques are at K3. Again, if you don't remember what is K3, K3 is apply. That means you'll be given with a scenario, like a typical sample specification and asked to apply any of these techniques to get the number of test cases. So you will have to apply this technique during the examination to get to the right answer. So all the four techniques are at K3 level in order to apply them during the examination. The next category we are talking about is white box test techniques. And if you remember again from chapter two, white box techniques are used by white box testers, which is more of like developer and we use it at the back end. That means this is completely dependent on the code and someone who has good understanding and knowledge of the code should be able to apply these techniques. Now here, in simple words, the basis is access to code and knowledge of code. If you are someone who doesn't know what is coding, if you are someone who doesn't have access to code, then white boss test techniques are not for you. Okay, so let's quickly see what the pointers and characteristics are trying to say about this category and what techniques we'll be covering here. So when it comes to white box test techniques, also known as structure based test technique, which is another synonym for that, are based on the analysis of the test objects, internal structure and processing, which includes the code and design both. As the test cases are dependent on how the software is designed, they can only be created after the design or implementation of the test objects. Now technique what we'll be covering here are statement testing and statement coverage. However, not both the things are techniques for us. Statement testing is technique and statement coverage is a measure. Measure means a metric. Similarly, we do have branch testing and branch coverage, which we will be covering as a part of the syllabus. Another important thing to talk about when it comes to white box testing, it is both at K2 level because this certification is mainly for the test engineers and we do not expect a test engineer to be very well versed with coding standards. So we don't want you to evaluate at that level, right? So the questions will be at K2 level. That means you just need to understand what is statement testing and what is statement coverage. Similarly, branch testing and branch coverage. And that's it. All that you have to answer is a theoretical question, but you will not be asked to solve what this technique is all about. And finally, the third category that we are covering here is called as experience based test techniques. As the name suggests, it's all dependent or based on the experience of the test engineer. Here, we don't talk about requirements. Here, we don't talk about code, but certainly talk about the experience of the test engineer who is performing these techniques or executions. Now, what do you think about the word experience? Here, it certainly consists of the past experience of testing similar applications. Same way, if I'm talking about domain knowledge, where the product belongs, so you must be good at that. And third, if you have any knowledge about typical defects, what you get in such applications. In that context, an experienced person is someone who is really working in this industry with similar type of products for quite some time. So in that context, if I say, can I ask a newbie or fresher to, be, to apply this particular technique? Answer is absolutely not. Okay, say for example, I've been working with banking domain for last seven years and I switched to automotive industry. Is that like I have experience and I can apply experience based techniques? Absolutely not. Because your experience or past experience and your domain knowledge comes from banking and we are talking about testing an automotive product. So two things are totally different. So experience certainly means when we talk about experience, it means the past experience, domain knowledge and knowledge of typical defects. So let's quickly have a look what exactly we are talking about from the syllabus. So experience-based test techniques 
effectively use the knowledge and experience of the testers for the design and implementation of test cases. The effectiveness of these techniques depends heavily on the tester skills. Experience-based test techniques can detect defects that may be missed by the black box and white box techniques. Now that's really interesting point. We will tell you when we come to this category and techniques that how exactly this is even possible. But yes, experience-based techniques can be very helpful in identifying those defects which your formal testing techniques cannot find. Also to add here, the techniques, uh, hence the experience-based test techniques are complementary to the black box and white box test techniques. And the techniques what we'll be covering here includes error guessing, exploratory testing, and checklist-based testing. All three techniques will be at K2 level, which means you just have to understand them and answer a theoretically based question. So put together, these are all the techniques what you'll be covering in our syllabus and should have good understanding of them. And for the black box, you must know how to apply them as well. So we'll be covering them accordingly with more details and examples. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.